Sister Shelly. Yeah. And who yeah. else was mentioned? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Are yeah. we hearing all those names? Yes. I am particular about mentioning the names because I want you to know that you pray for them in your own prayer time. Remember, we are like a big family. If one person is hurting, we are all hurting. So let's remember to pray for each other. That's very, very important. Let's bear each other's weather. Well, uh, Reverend Hammond is not here this morning, but there is a word from the Lord. Our own Reverend Renee Houghton will bring the message this morning. And all of us are going to support her even as she comes to bring the message. We are going to have a listening ear. You're going to be supporting her and drinking into the way. So even as the youth, the, is the youth choir one? As the young one, lead, lead us in uh, uh, some sound of our uh, introduction of our future this morning. We'll be glad to work on the thank you for being here.
way, God, that we are glorified and magnified in your holy name. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. 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 This morning, my text is coming from Ephesians, the third chapter, verses 14 through 21. But I will be reading them in my sermon instead of before the message. And the title of my message this morning is Allowing God's Power to Work in Us. Mount Sinai, I have some good news for you today. There is no limit to what God can do in us and through us if we allow his spirit to freely work in us. God can make us what we ought to be if we allow his power to work in us. Is that not good news? Yes, it is. If you know that that is good news, can you give God a hand of praise? The background of the text is when Paul was on his first visit to Ephesus. And we know that that visit lasted about three months. The work he began on this visit was carried forward by Apollos, Aquila, and Priscilla. And on his second visit, early in the following year, he remained at Ephesus for three years. Paul had successfully planted the church at Ephesus because a great door was opened to him. The church was established and strengthened by his diligent labor there. Ephesus was chosen as a center for the gospel to be spread abroad almost all throughout Asia. The word mightily grew and prevailed despite all the opposition and persecution he encountered. On his last journey to Jerusalem, we know that Paul was arrested, then transported, and imprisoned at Caesarea. The trial at Caesarea set Paul on a journey to Rome, where he was imprisoned for two more years. As a prisoner in Rome, Paul writes to the Ephesians from the calm season of an imprisonment. And when I saw that, I said, all that Paul went through, his calm season, calm season. was in, in prison. Yes. Yes. Far yes. from the noise and yes. turmoil, the conflict and strife that marked his ministry. Paul looks out on the church, seeing it as powerful, but divided. Mm -hmm. He understands the function of the Jewish believers to whom the gospel was first revealed and the function of the Gentile believers in God's plan for the restoration of all humanity. Yes. Paul knew that God loves the whole world mm. and had positioned this body of new believers, both Jews and Gentiles, to impact the world. In this epistle, Paul desired these new believers to understand their new identity in Christ. Amen. Paul described God's love for his creation, his children, and his relationship to his son, Jesus Christ. Then he moved to describe the son's love and commitment to the church. After clearly establishing their connection with God as his children and the son, Jesus Christ, Paul set out to describe the church's new position in Christ. The apostle Paul prayed the church would discover and experience all the revelation and spiritual enlightenment God can give. Yes. The Apostle Paul prays for their spiritual understanding. And Mount Sinai, really, every time we pray, mm -hmm. we should seek for ourselves and others the same kind of spiritual understanding. Yes. The only way that believers can be successful in their assignment is that they will allow God to open their understanding to the ample supply of spiritual strength of ready provided for the work and accomplishment of their assignment. Mount Sinai God gives us everything we need yes. for the task that he has before us. Amen. Again, I would say the good news in this text is there is no limit no. to what God can do in us and through us if we allow his spirit to freely work in us. Yes. God can make us what we ought to be if we allow this power to work in us. Amen. And from this statement, there are four things that I want us to look at. God 
can make us what we ought to be if we let him strengthen us with his might in the inner man. Mm -hmm. In Ephesians 3.16, Paul says, when I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glory and from our limited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Amen. There are three things that make believers fail. Mental intimidation, inner wounds, and inner weaknesses. We as believers have allowed, and some of us still allow, Satan to convince us that we don't have what it takes. The fact that we are saved is an indication that we have the right stuff. The anointing, the talent, and every gift we need for success. After we get past mental intimidation, we must deal with our inside issues. There's a tendency to hide our wounds, but I'm here today to let you know that hiding them is not an option. Our deepest wounds are inflicted by people we love and trust, our family, friends, co-workers, and even church members. Hurt people tend to hurt others. But if we do not allow God to heal our wounds mm -hmm. and to make us whole, we become like the people who have hurt us. Mm -hmm. People that are mean are people who used to be nice but got hurt and never got healed. Mm -hmm. Many of our weaknesses flow out of our pain. His spirit must be allowed to strengthen us with his might in the inner man. Yes. God can make us what we ought to be if we let him strengthen us with his might. God can make our healed weaknesses a source of strength mm -hmm. to help others if we allow him to. Yes. Allow, point number two, allow him to indwell us with his presence. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3.17 says Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Mm -hmm. We must allow Jesus to live in our hearts by faith. Mm -hmm. Paul was praying that the church would practice the presence of God. That is to live each day, each day, church, abiding in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Many Christians experience that on Sunday mm -hmm. and Wednesday night only mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. in the church with the saints. Mm -hmm. During the rest of the week, it seems that some will be okay with leaving God's presence at church. Mm -hmm. Some of us don't read, pray, or talk to God other than the times of fellowship. Mm -hmm. And then some of us do read, do pray, and talk to God. But we don't take the time to plant those same seeds in others. Amen. The abiding presence of God helps us make all the difference. It calms our fears and steadies our nerves. We can share the gospel all in our homes, our community, and even in our city. Today, when you buy a car, most people are like it will, co it will come with a GPS system. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, y'all remember On Star? <laughs> On Star would ride with you, it would talk to you. If you got, you got lost, it showed you the way to go. If you got home, it showed you where the nearest restaurant was. And even when you got in an accident, it was still an emergency vehicle, mm -hmm. and so on. But not only do we have GPS systems for our cars, we have a GPS system with our God. For well, He is our God for this system. If we get off track or if we take the wrong road, He will direct us to make a U turn. Yes. And I did many of them drive for lift and get back on His path. We may think we know the best route on Him for our, where we want to. Go. However, he sees and knows everything. He knows the problems we will face ahead. Mm -hmm. He knows what we need to wait on. Mm -hmm. He knows where we can avoid problems mm -hmm. if we only listen to him and await his direction. Mm -hmm. Paul desires the church to live with the abiding presence of God. God's presence changes everything, church. He calms our fears. He quiets the murmurs of our heart, mm. and his presence even silences the voice of the enemy. Amen. Number three, God.
God allow God to perfect us in his love. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19 says, if we allow God to protect us in our love, our roots will grow down into God's love and keep us strong. And we will have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. Amen. Every believer that has God's love shared abroad in their heart. But it has to be perfected in us, which means that we become mature enough to live out the love we have in our heart. But we must allow the Spirit of God to perfect his Love us. Since God is love, God's love must become soul, which our souls are nurtured. God's love must be the foundation on which we build our lives, and God's love must be the motivation for every action. His love surpasses knowledge. We will do more out of love than we will out of anything else. God said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes. The power of God with us is activated by faith in God's word and his anointing. Faith working by love. And all things are possible if we only believe. Amen. Number four. Let's allow God to fill us with his fullness. Verse 19 says, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. There is a desire in every human heart for a place of significance. All of us want to make a difference in this world. The thing that causes a person to make a difference is what he or she is full of. What they are full of may be good or bad, positive or negative, right or wrong. But it always makes a difference. Yes. Like a person filled with alcohol, they are under the influence. The influence causes them to make a difference. It could be a good difference or it could be a bad difference. Ephesians 5 and 18 said, Be not drunk with wine, whether in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. One of the things that God desires that we are not to just to have the Holy Spirit, but that, that we be filled with His Spirit to operate under His influence. You must allow God to fill you with His fullness. When we allow God to fill us, He moves us from worldliness to holiness. Yes. He moves us from darkness to light. Because God is light. Amen. His light moves us to walk in the light. Amen. He transforms us from selfishness to service. Yes. God is love. Yes. His love transforms us into love and service. Yes. We love others the way God loves us. Amen. He transforms us from timid faith to bold witness. Mm -hmm. He empowers us to be bold witnesses in this world. Mm -hmm. King Solomon wrote a book about it called Ecclesiastes, yes. which could have been called, can I save you some time? <laughs> <laughs> Drugs, sex, money, none of that can fill you. Bad things lead to bondage. Good things lead to happiness. Yes. But God alone can satisfy the longings of our hearts. Yes. So yes. can't nobody yes. do us like Jesus. There to allow God to make you what you ought to be. But there is a caution in allowing God to strengthen you with might in the inner man, allowing God to indwell you with his spirit, allowing God to fill you with his presence and perfect his love. <coughs> that caution is the glory issue. There's a possibility that we might I try to take his glory for ourselves. There's a possibility that others might try to give us his glory. But in 2 Corinthians, <laughs> 3 and 5 says, not that we are sufficient, only the Sunday school class, nobody. <laughs> not that we are sufficient of ourselves 
to do anything as our as yes. anything as of ourselves, yes. but our sufficiency is of God. Amen. Unto Him yes. be the glory. Yes. We have no power in ourselves. Yes. We should not take credit ourselves. Yes. We have no power to enlighten the mind and change the heart. We are only instruments in the hand of God. Whatever we excuse me, whatever we do, whatever we have. And whatever we become, to him be the glory. Yes. Amen. Ephesians 3 and 21 says, unto him be glory yes. in the church by Christ Jesus Amen. throughout all ages, world without end. Mm -hmm. the, the text says, unto him be yes. glory, yes. not Amen. unto us. Remember during the story of Exodus, where Moses wasn't allowed into the promised land? In a nutshell, we all know the children were murmuring again. Yes. They were thirsty again. Yes. And God told Moses to speak to the rock. But Moses, in his anger, smote the right rock twice, and the water came out. Though Moses was used by God for many years, God doesn't excuse Moses' attitude towards his people. Nor would God share his glory with Moses. God said, you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of Israel, in other words, you did not give me the glory of my power mm -hmm. in doing this miracle and punctually fulfilling my promises, nor did you display my goodness in doing it despite the people's hard headedness. Mm -hmm. This was a moment in which God's glory, guidance, and goodwill should have magnified despite the people murmuring. When God blessed us to do mm -hmm. exceedingly, Abundantly above all that we ask or think, yes. unto Him belongs yes. the glory yes. and yes. honor. Yes. We must allow God to close the gap between what we are and what we ought to be. Yes. For some, that means salvation. For some, it means repentance and renewal. For some, it means coming to be healed of inner wounds and weaknesses. Others may be coming saying, Lord, perfect your love in me. And finally, others may come saying, Lord, fill me yes. with your fullness. Amen. Do it again. Fill me again. And when you allow God's power to work in you, then you can let it lead you. And when you let it lead you, you can feel it moving. Amen. And when you feel it moving, yes. a spirit of praise should be felt. Yes. And when yes. it's felt, we need to let it have its way. Yes. Because praise helps us honor and worship and give maximum glory to the one who deserves it. Yes. Praise to focus on God, not our problems. Yes. God's power, presence, and ability transform our thinking. Yes. Praise helps us complete God's primary purpose for completing us. It is impossible to know the will of God without true worship. Yes. Praise helps us understand our own identity, privilege, and responsibility. Yes. Praise helps us fully appreciate and appropriate God's grace and goodness of peace. Yes. Praise helps us gain a richer sense of spiritual, mental, emotional, social, and physical tranquility. Praise helps us gain a greater awareness of how rich we are through God's blessing. Yes. Praise helps us feel greater security in His everlasting love and shows us from creation. Yes. Praise helps us have greater self-esteem yes. more than God picks us up for yes. himself. Praise helps us give greater incentive yes. to live our lives in holiness and consecration. Yes. Praise helps us live lives that are blameless, pure, and holy devoted to God. Yes. Praise humbles us. Yes. When we worship God, we gain a view of ourselves. Yes. Praise the we gain self-loving image based on God's view of us by removing pride, praise, strengthen us against temptation. Praise helps us to show us the rich blessing that can be there to Christ. Praise helps us to understand our inheritance and entitlements in Christ. Praise reminds us that we are created to be witnesses of praise to God. Praise reminds us of our wonderful redemption, deliverance, and salvation in Christ. Praise leads us from guilt, shame, and the way of sin through Christ. Praise reveals our devotion to God. If I love Christ, I will praise Him. He is first in my life. I will 
can no longer survive in an atmosphere of praise. Hallelujah. If you want to see a difference in your relationship with Christ and when your walk with him, allow God's power to work in you so you can start to enjoy these benefits of praise today. Continue even when you feel prone to give up. Amen. Thank you. 